Hey everybody, welcome to Plub Lab. Uh, if you don't know what Plub Lab is, it's a hackerspace here in Austin, Texas. We are a, a group of misfits who decided to uh, work on freedom technology for the rest of our lives. If you guys want a membership or anything like that, feel free to uh, come talk to me afterwards. And we also have the QR codes up there when you come up the door. Um, this is Nostra Devs. I think this is number seven, Super Testnet? I don't know. Feels, about num feels like number seven. But uh, So we started this about seven months ago. It was Captain Stack's idea. And I think it was, it was the best idea we've ever had for a meetup here in town. So um, it's really cool. We're, we're seeing it grow. If you guys have any questions, it's very free form. Uh, Super and Captain Sachs have put together a really good agenda today. So feel free to ask any questions and um, all that kind of stuff. First, I want to thank our sponsors. We actually have a sponsor. We have two sponsors. But uh, we have one, uh, one small sponsor called CoinKite. They're a big, massive uh, Bitcoin company. They sell these block clocks. They also do SATS cards. They do all sorts of really cool stuff. I highly recommend them, coinkite.com. Uh, shout out to Vivek and MVK for uh, getting us this. Uh, the other one is GPUtopia. I think I said it right, .ai. This is a marketplace here that allows you to buy and sell your GPU capacity um, for SATS, which is pretty dope. Um, I don't know too much about it, but I, I know one of our good friends named Christopher David is the one that uh, is doing it. Maybe Super can talk about it a little bit more. But they're sponsoring uh, Plub Lab right now, so uh, definitely check it out. And if you can, jump on Twitter and say, hey, thanks for sponsoring Plub Lab. That, that would help us out a lot. Um, cool. With that, here's Super Testnet for Nostra Devs number seven. I haven't looked into GPU Topia either, but I can tell you some of the things that GPUs are really good at. They're really good at doing uh, difficult mathematical equations. GPUs are used to calculate stuff like the in-game, uh, when you're playing a video game, they're used to calculate if they're like three-dimensional matrices and stuff. Uh, and so some people use them uh, to do stuff like calculating large digits of pi or finding stars in the, or f finding star transits or planet transits in, the, uh, in pictures of the sky from satellites. Uh, and, but you can like rent out your GPU to people who need lots of computing power using this tool um, so that uh, so you get paid for just having a computer sitting idle somewhere, which is kind of a cool idea. So uh, I, if you want to learn more, check it out. There, you've got a way to join a beta, I guess. But um, I can't say a whole lot about it because I haven't personally looked into it. But if I was selling GPU, my, my GPU um, capacity, I, I would, those are some of the things I could imagine people might want it for. We good? All right, let's get into some Noster stuff. So I have been, normally, uh, I go to Fiat Jaff's uh, Twitter, because if I go to, well, it's, I guess it's X now, x.com slash Fiat Jaff, I get to see all the stuff that Fiat Jaff, who invented Noster, thought was cool this month. So I normally just scroll down this thing and like find whatever he thought was cool for news articles. But unfortunately, he has posted about zero things other than drive chain. Uh, this month, and he seems to be a very angry little man, uh, rage quitting, and uh, you know, just he's non nonstop talking about how we need drive chain. So, boo, yeah. Uh, even as somebody who likes drive chain, come on, Fiat Jeff, don't be a one track trick pony. Um, but then I found, uh, I also remembered Noster Magazine. They, they do regular posts about uh, cool stuff that's coming out on Noster. So you might consider following Noster Magazine on Twitter. Uh, actually, let me do that. <laughs> uh, and then follow them on Noster as well. Uh, actually, I don't know if they're on Noster. They might, they don't have their end pub. Hey, Noster Magazine. Let me message them. Uh, can you, I can't even see this thing. Can you add your Noster pub key to your X profile? Yeah, uh, because I would like to follow them on there as well. Okay, so check them out if you want to learn some of the stuff that we're going that we go over every month, um, because that's one of the places where I get it. The other place is the Noster Telegram group. Um, lots of people post in there about new projects they're developing, and so I just like scroll down and look for GitHub links basically through this thing, and then I then I check them out. Uh, and so yeah, we got some stuff that's, that's up. One of the th cool things that came out this month is called dnester.org. And I know that Captain Stacks has long thought it would be really cool if we had a better DNS system because the current DNS system is very centralized. If you don't know what DNS is, uh, whenever you make a query to the internet, such as to this website, dnester.org, or google.com, or Twitter, 
Facebook.com or X.com or whatever website you're going to, uh, this, your computer has to figure out what website to load when you type this in. Um, because a website is, of course, a set of files that are stored in a computer somewhere, and your computer has to find that computer and then ask it for that content. And the DNS system is, um, a, way, is, is a system for mapping uh, human-readable names like dnester.org to uh, instructions for your computer about what computer to reach out to. Um, and it's centralized. There's like a group of, there's like a committee of people who uh, run a database of, you know, this uh, name is associated with this computer. And so if you request this name, we will tell you how to get to this computer. But it's totally centralized, and some people don't like that. So uh, this guy, uh, Melvin Carvalho, is the author of this NIP. He proposes rep that we could use Noster instead as uh, a domain name mapping system. Uh, and so you can check this out at dnestra.org. If you're interested in decentralizing the internet, check it out. Maybe, maybe, this could be, maybe this could help. I can't say too much about it because I have not read this, but uh, the use case is interesting. By having a Nostra public key mapped to a domain name, users and services can easily share, reference, or verify the authenticity of a domain name based on its associated Nostra public key. So instead of relying on a central system to tell you this name maps to this, uh, this, web, uh, this uh, computer, you could use Nostra for this. For instance, if Alice wants to verify that example.com is genuinely associated with a specific Nostra public key, she can look up the Nostra event with kind 31034 is the kind number he invented for this, and verify the domain name in the content. So that's interesting. Uh, so check that out if you want to learn more about, about that and uh, help decentralize the internet. We got any questions about DNS stuff? No? How is it different than the ordinals? How is it, so the question is, how is it different than the ordinals one? So the ordinals people have created a domain name system based on dot, the, using the, the last um, four characters, dot SATS. I think that's what it is, right? Dot sats? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, and so you can, you can use Bitcoin <clears throat> to register domain names at dot sats by just uh, being the first, I think it's just a first come first serve basis. You, you, you say, I want this domain, you send a Bitcoin transaction that registers it on the Bitcoin network as an ordinal, and then um, when someone wants to resolve whatever dot sats, uh, it will look it up on the blockchain. It'll actually f get a copy of the blockchain, look it up there and say, who was the first person to register this, this dot sats thing? And then it will, that, that record right on the blockchain will tell them how to get to the computer associated with uh, where, where they can find the files. Um, so there are, there's, those people are doing that. This doesn't involve a blockchain. So these, the, most of the stuff in Nostr tries to do stuff without using a blockchain. And instead, I assume he ha, uh, is, is using relays to uh, validate that this, that, that this stuff is there instead. Because mo most of the time in Nostr, if you're not doing it on a blockchain, you're putting the data on a relay instead. Um, but I don't know. It seems, it seems like if you're interested in learning more about this, uh, you could you can check this out and do a full read through and then maybe talk about it in the Noster telegram group um, But just making you aware that this is one thing that somebody's trying to do and I think that's cool I like experimentation and new ideas even if I haven't read them yet Cool, so by the way as is tradition with Noster dev Noster devs uh, If at any time anybody gets bored with whatever I'm talking about you can tag me out you can just say all right, super, get off the stage because Captain also has a bunch of content that he wants to share. Uh, and so you can just say super, get off the stage and then Captain will come up and share what he wants to. So be aware of that. Uh, so that is NIP135 DNSter. You can check that out on the dnester.org website for more information. So the next thing we have on our list is Noster Profile Manager, a lightweight type TypeScript micro app for basic Noster profile management. Current USP, what, does anyone know what USP stands for? User something prototype? I don't know. Uh, is offline backup and restore. So supposedly, you can come here to this website and load a profile, which I'm probably going to get an error when I click this. No, I didn't get an error. Uh, but uh, yeah, I did. You need a NIP7 browser extension. OK, cool. I have one in my other browser, Brave. So let's see what I get. It's not loading in Brave. Am I still on the internet? 
well, that website loaded and then now it's not. So can't show you it, I guess. Is there what in the source? DNS address could not be found. Well, clearly the DNS system doesn't work very well and we need something better, right? How appropriate. Uh, I think maybe our internet just went down. Switch over to the CIA. Yeah, I'll switch to our backup internet and see if that fixes it. Is it working for you? Yeah, now, okay, apparently it's, apparently our internet's down, our other internet. So, yes, let's load my profile. Wait, it wants to make transactions? That's not cool. I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got like 50 cents on Albi, so. Cool, so it loaded my profile. This is kind of nice. And uh, now it's got a backup. We just backed up your latest profile to your offline browser data. Download for safekeeping. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then you can just download your, uh, download your profile. Let's take a look at it. I like that. That's a nice, simple application. Here's my, here's my Nostra profile, all in JSON format, with my picture, my uh, lightning address, when I created my profile. That's nice. I like that. Well done, man. That, that worked well. It's simple. And uh, I like that. Yeah. Congratulations, this guy. Any questions about the metadata Noster application? So, so ideally, super, could, could somebody make like a discuss um, kind of thing and then we can just implement, implement it into like a comment system for like those blogs or WordPress blogs? Like Dis I think discuss. So the question is could you make a discuss based on Noster? Is, it, is that the question? Based off of this? Or based off of this? Discuss is that thing where if you don't have a comment section on your website, you can import like a discuss script tag and then it'll generate a comment section for you. Isn't that, isn't that what discuss is? Uh, yeah, there are, there are such things on Nostra. There are, people have made them. I don't know if you would need this for it, but this is, it's nice that you can load somebody's profile from this and then, and then save it locally. That's kind of neat. But um, what is the name of a Nostra commenting system? Uh, I know Fiat Jeff made one back in the day. Noster comment system. Um, Noster powered commenting system. Yeah, so I think Fiat Jeff made one way, way early in Noster's history, but maybe this guy made another one. So let's see. Um, is there a link to it? Rebuilding Bolt.fun's Nostra powered. Oh, yeah, Bolt.fun has one. Whenever you go on Bolt.fun, they have a Nostra powered commenting system. But this guy was trying to make a new one, I guess, but he doesn't give a link to it, so maybe he didn't finish it. Um, but yeah, you can't. You certainly can, and Bolt.fun has one. So any anytime you go to Bolt.fun, and you look at their, um, you look at the comments on their posts. So let's find a post here. Topics. Be this. Yeah, I could, I could log in with Noster if I wanted to, uh, right there with that button. But when I go into this, see how it's loading the post right here, loading comments? It's loading them from Noster. So if I scroll down to the comments section, I could, yeah, yeah, I could, I could connect my Noster account and leave a comment, and I'd be the first one. Let's do it. Let's do it just to have fun. Uh, I'll have to do this in the other browser, Brave. I wonder if John's open sourcing Well, they usually do. I, I think I remember them open sourcing it. So connect my Noster, uh, use the extension. Connect, confirm. Hi, this is a test comment. And you notice how it pulled in my profile right there as well. Yes, that's my profile picture. So totally works. And now I have a comment on there and other people can interact with it. So yeah, Noster commenting is a thing. Um, but that is not what this guy made. He just made a thing for backing up your profile. Uh, wherever I am, over here somewhere. This one, Nostra Profile Manager. So good, good job, man. He uh, supports a number of events, and this is the, uh, this is the, his upcoming features and stuff. So if you're interested in helping him make a better version of this, contribute to his GitHub. And uh, that, this is a cool tool. I like it, making it easy to back up your Nostra Profile. Smart move. Uh, the next thing I have on here is Rabbit. Rabbit is a web client for Nostra that supposedly works like tweet, TweetDeck. Uh, it's the note I've taken in the URL here. So let's just see 
uh, how it works. It is checking that the browser installed. It's not. So let me go into the other browser. So many of these things require you to have this extension installed. I think it's an anti-pattern. Let's log in. And uh, what do we get? OK, I, this, this reminds me of TweetDeck. TweetDeck is, a, is an alternative interface for Twitter that is designed to appeal to Japanese people. <laughs> but not me. I don't really like it. It doesn't to you? I, I, rem I remember. So TweetDeck has these like panels where you have different sections, uh, that, different sections where you can view content. And uh, that's what he's displaying here. So it reminds me of TweetDeck. You can customize relays and stuff. You can add new sections, I think. So you can make tweets or make posts. OK, so cool. So check that out. Uh, the URL is this. For anyone who is watching the live stream, you can easily check that out. Did you did you mention the the reward we're doing for the two best comments no, on Nostr? No, I didn't. Yeah, so if you're watching on our Zap stream or I guess any other platform, uh, shoot us a question on Nostr, and me and Captain will both give twenty thousand sats to what we think whatever we think is the best question. So I'll pick a best question, he'll pick a best question, and we'll give twenty thousand sats to them each. So if you're on uh, the live stream, um, contribute by posting a question, and then we will uh, we will zap you if if it's a good question, if it's really if it's the best. So check that out. Uh, if you have, does anyone have any questions about uh, TweetDeck or this or rabbit? I guess it's not not TweetDeck, but rabbit. Oh, check that out. Ray Ray, live, super test net with Pleb Lab dropping Nostra dev facts. Catch them if you can. These are like, this is cool. It's like letting people know yeah. when I'm referenced right in, the, right in the thing. I like that. Nice. Nice. Uh, here, by the way, is our live stream. So that was even helpful. That guy just helped us get in there. <laughs> huh? No. I got, I got tagged out. OK, so the next thing is, is Captain. He's going to present, and we will move forward. All right. We are going to take a look at my favorite Noster project, Wiki Noster. Uh, it's the Wikipedia replacement built on Noster. Uh, this is something that people like Jack Dorsey have been asking about pretty much from day one on Noster. It's like, is somebody going to build a Noster-based Wikipedia? Well, we finally have it. And uh, I think the level of excitement that some people have for it is not at all matched by the actual use of it. Um, so I've been trying to think of some ways to encourage people to actually use the tool. Can you show it to us? Okay, uh, what are you guys seeing right now? Uh, well, we're seeing your desktop, and now we see nothing. Okay. It's, okay. apparently it's showing the wrong desktop. Yeah, so let me see if I can oh, bring it in. <laughs> this is really clunky, but. Uh, okay, so we're taking a look at Wiki Noster. Can you make it bigger? <laughs> uh, Wait, is this Wiki Noster? This is Wiki Noster. This is like TweetDeck. <laughs> well, so Wiki Noster is actually a throwback to the first Wiki. Um, the first Wiki, I forget what it was called. I think it was, it was Wiki Wiki Web, I think. And it has the same layout where everything is in columns. And when you open a page, it shows in a new column. So it almost creates a trail of which pages you visited. And I'm not really going to be able to demo like this because um, it's displaying on, on the wrong monitor. But maybe I can demo. Yeah, that'd be great. I, I think I just need to turn off monitor, too, and just have everything mirrored. Uh, so let me 
move your mouse over to. It's over to that side. You need to move it back. Okay, there's your mouse. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess actually I actually need I need this thing, the start menu. <laughs> Everything's on that side. Yeah. And then I need to search for display. At this rate, there it is. Be tagged back in before I get to show anything. <laughs> and then there's a mirroring button on here somewhere, right there. Apply. Keep. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about our technical difficulties. I'm also new to Linux. I just uh, ditched Windows in the last two weeks. Thank you. <laughs> that was easy, though. You it was. Nice. Okay, so we're looking at Wikinoster, and like I said, it's a throwback to WikiWikiWeb. Uh, okay, Wiki, WikiWikiWeb was the precursor to Wikipedia, and you can see it opens the page in a column, and if I open another page, it opens in a new column. So Wikinoster is very similar. Um, I, can, I can pull up the index page and it opens it in a new column. And uh, I can close it, I can open another one, or I can search. So let's do a search for Noster. All right, so th th what separates uh, Wiki Noster is that unlike Wikipedia, there, you're not just limited to one like canonical page. Um, when you search, you'll get a choice of pages. This was a bad example because there's only one, but I know there are multiple versions of the Abraham page. So this is really where Noster shines because you don't have just a single source of truth. Um, so what is Abraham? Apparently a group of spirits who control a woman. Uh, what is this? I don't know. <laughs> um, so someone else came along and put a more... Uh, uh, I don't know, commonly agreed on definition, I guess. And, um, but really the point of this is that um, your, your pages can just fork off in any, any direction. As long as someone wants to maintain a page, maybe they'll keep a backup on their own relay. You can have any number of pages competing over, um, over truth, basically. So, you know, I think it's a really big move because it takes that away from the walled garden that Wikipedia has built for themselves over the years. Uh, any questions about WikiNoster? Do we have Do we have any questions from the live stream? Let's check that. Uh, well, it's pretty. It, it's uh, slim pickings here. If anybody else wants to jump in, there's a, a total of forty thousand sats on the line. Uh, Twenty thousand for each question. But right now, it's. Uh, it has to be a good question. <laughs> right now, <laughs> this is what we're working with. Is mayonnaise an instrument? That's, that's the only. <laughs> it has to be a good question. So, so that one is not, it doesn't cut the mustard. Sorry. Uh, here's an app I've been working on. It's not quite ready for prime time, but I, I've had a few different ideas for naming it. Like, Maybe Mutester is a good name because it's a client that's kind of based around mute events. Um, I've also called it a web of distrust because a lot of people want to know, like, how can we use Noster to start building decentralized webs of trust? So my idea is web of trust is really easy. Basically, you can find someone who follows someone who follows someone and trust everybody. How do you identify the people you really can't trust? So web of distrust is the idea that I'm more interested in the uh, the data I can scrape off of Noster that indicates people who don't trust each other. And using this data, um, I can make a score for each, uh, basically between any two people, I can, I can come up with a score. So this, this is logged in as me, this is my view, so it'll generate a score of how much, how much, um, how much trust is implicit for each of these people based on the people I follow. So it's entirely based on, on my follows. And I'll try to find a good example of someone who has a low trust rating. Uh, okay, Victor has kind of a low rating, uh, 94%, and it, an a it's not bad. <laughs> it's not the worst. 
It's it's showing, yeah. It, but it's only within the people that I follow. Oh, wow. So so every every person's view is going to be unique to them. And I expect that a lot of Nostra apps are going to start following this pattern soon. But I also want to have my own way to kind of verify, like. You know, I might go into an app that's like an Amazon app, and it's going to show these are product reviews uh, from people, you know, and th these are the trust scores for those people. But I, I still want to have my own w own way, so I don't have to trust the source of that. I can always fall back on my own app, even if it's clunky, and I can run it and actually get like a trust score for someone that I'm wondering about. Uh, okay, I'll try to find. I know there's some there's some examples here uh, where the rating is really low. Uh, let's see, I had the wrong tab up. Okay, uh, Udi, or is it Udi? I forget how to pronounce it. 90% trusted, like, he came in and made quite a stir on Noster because, uh, well, did anyone else see when, when uh, Udi got on Noster? He was basically like, I guess he was trying to promote sort of a Web3 community built around ordinals, so he didn't really get a great reception on Noster. <laughs> he tried to he tried to get Noster follows and they said okay now we're taking everything over to Threads and I haven't logged into Threads in months I I assume that it, nobody uses it anymore. <laughs> threads uh, they yeah it's from Facebook. the The only angle of decentralization with Threads is that when they originally announced it, they said they were going to integrate with the Fediverse and then they didn't. Well, Alex Gleason has, I think, a good explanation for what's really going on there. Uh, he suggested that when Meta built Threads and they built their own Fediverse server from the ground up, they never intended to deploy it. His theory is that it was really just kind of like a weapon against Twitter. Just the ability that they could turn it on was supposed to, I don't know, scare Twitter or something. Or at least give them some clout that they have the ability to do that, that if they wanted to go in that direction, they could probably become the largest instance in the Fediverse, but <laughs> apparently that's, that's not what they really want to do. Um, I think Mines is doing something similar because Mines uh, just recently started federating with the Fediverse, and I see it as probably like a, a move of desperation because, I mean, I didn't realize this. Mines has been around for years. I mean, it's been around for a long time. They've been doing some like Web3 token uh, boost stuff. I don't really get it. Um, I mean, I guess it's like their equivalent of Zaps, but based on Ethereum tokens. Um, I thought they integrated with Noster. Well, their integration with Noster is, I don't think it's a true integration. And, and that, happened, that happened some months back, I guess. Um, as far as I can tell, it's a one way. It's not a true bridge, but it's just broadcasting. Okay. It's a one way peg to Noster. <laughs> yep, but if someone on Noster replies to it, they're not going to see it on Mines. So I'm like, what are they really trying to do? I, I, think, I think Mines is hostile to Noster. Like, I don't think they really want to confront it because they know that it could, I, I guess, it, it could replace them. Like. I think they're just direct competitors, and yeah, so I was kind of excited when Mines uh, started federating with uh, the Fediverse because I was like, oh, that will actually bring it into Noster through the Fediverse Noster bridge. Well, that doesn't work either. So uh -oh. I, I see two like half-assed or not even trying attempts towards um, Noster integration. And so I get, I, I'm just concluding that they hate Noster. I think they actually just hate Noster and don't want it to succeed. <laughs> uh, oh, so back on the uh, Web of Distrust page, here's a good example. Uh, Bot, I think, is originally from the Fediverse and has a lot, a lot of mute, report, uh, mute events and report events against Bot. Um, but overall, I'm still getting an 85% score because there's also a pretty good, decent number of followers within, within my follows. This is not like Noster Band's global follow count. Everything that I'm seeing here is specific to me. So within my followers, there's 81 that follow bot, and I'm able to derive an overall trust score of 85%. Um, there's one user here 
This is the lowest one I could find, 66%. And I can, I can see why. I mean, I can tell, but I still follow this person because I think they bring kind of a different energy that I like in, in Noster. Um, yeah, so you kind of have to interpret these scores like in your own context because like, let's say this was, a, if it was for an Amazon product, just because I'm seeing a low 66% score, I might still trust Megan for, so, that, so that's where trust maybe needs to be broken down into different categories. Maybe different scores for different things. What is an example of a, something under 50%? I don't have any, well, I would have to follow someone. Maybe if I followed just a straight up spam bot, I might be able to get that. <laughs> I'll have to play around with it more. Those are only your followers, right? Everything, yeah, everything displayed here is only, well, I, that's a different question, but everything displayed on this page is all within my follows. Um, it doesn't have to be, like, but then how would, I, how would I decide what to include? So really what I should do is have, I should just have an input field where you can enter anyone's NPUB and then generate a score for that person. So that, that will be coming up. Right now as a workaround, what I would have to do is just like follow that person temporarily and then I'll be able to see a score from them. Let's, let's do it. Go follow some random person. Like, <laughs> <enough for> okay. <laughs> follow someone. Follow Super, see what happens. I follow Super. Do you follow me? I, I believe so. What's the formula for calculating? Oh yeah, so the formula, that's a good question. Um, the formula is the, uh, your trust percentage is the percentage of the total events, whether good or bad, positive or negative indications. It's the percentage of that total which are positive. So it's a formula that could range anywhere from zero to one, zero to 100%. Does that how, make sense? How do you measure positive? A follow. So right now, the only thing I look at for a positive is a follow. Um, Follows are kind of a proxy for, for trust on Noster. So are you weighing like, reports? Uh, I'm, I'm weighing them equally right now. Um, there's, there's an unlimited number of ways you could make a score. So I think any decision about weighting is kind of arbitrary. So I, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible and just count, count all those things as a single uh, negative reputation. Have you thought about um, using clustering? Because like, a lot of companies, the way that they handle anomaly detection is to plot out people on a coordinate system. So then people will exist in clusters in terms of who follows who. I mean, people need a far I, I, I've thought about that. I, I don't know how to do that kind of analysis. But I think when, when more people come into this space, and start using Noster to try to build tools like this, I think we'll see some interesting clusterings. Like, like <laughs> basically, there's a certain group of people I, I mute because I just consider them influencers. And it's like, maybe they have, maybe the things they, ha they say are okay, but I'm just like not really into influencers. So maybe, maybe there's some clustering around um, examples like that, um, where you can see like, okay, there's a particular group that tends to follow this set of people, and then there's a separate group that tends to mute them. Um, and how many people are you working with? Like, how many people are you tracking? At this point, it's limited to just the people that I follow, but in the future, I want to expand it to at least one more degree of separation. So I would like for it to be able to account for follows of follows, because that would open it up to a lot more data points. Um, at this point, Noster is like a small enough network where your second degree connections are almost everyone in Noster. Like if you follow a decent number of people, let's say you follow a few hundred people, your second degree connections are probably gonna be at least 10,000 people, and there's only somewhere around 10,000 um, active Noster users. Did we get any questions on the chat? <laughs> uh, oh, it looks like we have some. What is the airspeed velocity? <laughs> what are we looking at? <laughs> what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? I, I don't even know what that means. 
maybe you can answer that one, Super. Uh, <laughs> is the data on Wiki Noster distributed on multiple relays for redundancy or only a single relay? That's a good question. That one will, that one earns the 20,000. Oh, what's that? Let's hear it. With a static IP, I'm trying to think what that means, because like, okay. I know what that means. What does that mean? Can I you out? Oh no, I need I need to answer a question though. So I'll answer the Wiki Noster question, and then I'll let myself get tagged out. <laughs> um, okay. So the question is: Is the data on Wiki Noster all on one relay? Well. Given the architecture of Noster, the data can be on any relays, even if it happens to be like maybe the app itself is just using one relay. Just, be, just because it's a Noster event, it's pretty trivial for me to find those events and then start duplicating them across different relays. And, and relays are already doing this. Like some of the really uh, major relay networks, what they do is they, um, they go out, they seek, and they pull in events from other relays. So just by the, the nature of being Noster, it's, the events are going to be distributed. Now, a good app is going to give users um, choice over their relay selection. This Wiki Noster app is currently not a good app. <laughs> I think it just has some hard-coded selection. But we're getting there. And there doesn't have to be just one client. So the, that's the really nice thing about the architecture we're working with is you're not limited to one relay. You're not limited to one client. We're essentially just defining standards that anyone can use. Thanks. Keep popping them. In, keep on popping them into the Nostra chat. Uh, okay. So the other question was: uh, Is there is there a workaround to get Nostra relays working on, on a static IP address? So um, yeah, there are uh, a solution to setting up relays without a static IP. Okay. So uh, what this refers to is that most people. Uh, if you if you have an uh, internet connection to your internet service provider, um, likely your internet service provider has a range of IP addresses that they can assign your computer. IP addresses are like are similar to phone numbers, uh, and just like you have to, there's a limited number of phone numbers, there's a limited number of IP addresses, uh, and so the companies that serve users have to purchase a range of them and then assign them to their users. Um, but they run out. Like they, they've some, they often have more users than they have IP addresses that they've purchased. Uh, so they have to do this thing where they where they switch them up. They'll actually have people share IP addresses for a while, uh, and and they will like rotate through them so you don't get stuck with the same person all the time. Um, and when when they do that, what ha what happens is your computer reaches out to request some stuff from the internet, and when it gets a response, that's supposed to go to your IP address, but um, if if it's dynamic, you know it, it, it changes occasionally, so so people cannot you can't like easily set up a website uh, on your own network for people to visit because if they try to access your website uh, three days later, it might be at a different IP address and then they won't be able to access your content. Um, so th so what he's asking here is if I have a if I have a non-static IP, if I have a dynamic IP from my regular internet service provider. How can I set up a relay? Because people will try to reach out to my relay, and then suddenly the, the domain won't point to it anymore because my IP address changed. Does that, does, that, does that help clarify what the question is about for everybody? OK, cool. Um, and yeah, there are, there are some solutions for that. Tor is one. You can set up a relay on Tor, because uh, Tor addresses are free, and you can just get one. Uh, so you can do that. You can also use like a VPS, a virtual private server. Uh, you, uh, c buy, you purchase space on on uh, a on a server somewhere like an Amazon server, upload your relay program there, and uh, then they they have an uh, they have purchased a large range of IP addresses because they're Amazon and they'll give you a static one and uh, and then it won't change all the time. So those are a couple of things you can do. Yeah, Cloudflare does offer static IP proxies. Uh, I don't. I have never used it, but they do have that as a service. I think. 
Um, and there are websites you can go to where you can purchase a static IP address and have it forward it to your dynamic one, and it'll like constantly, you, you'll, your computer will have to constantly tell it what its new IP address is. So yeah, those are some of the solutions. Yeah, like di like dynamic DNS. Um, I think DYN DNS. I think that's even a website. Yeah, so this is this is one of the websites that will do that. If you have a dynamic DNS, you can use this website to uh, purchase a static one, and your computer will constantly tell the static one what your what yours is, and then they'll they'll forward oh, your traffic to you. Like right yeah. So here you go, fella. Uh, so I need to give the, whoever posted that to ask him if he can post a lightning address. So that I can zap him his twenty thousand cents, uh, or or an, well, that might not work because it might not have a lightning address in it. So a lightning or, or an NPub if you have a lightning address in your profile. Okay, so there we go. That is the questions from the from the group. Uh, the next thing to go over is Nostra.com is for sale. Uh, for five million dollars, a, a reasonable price, you can have this. There you go. The guy who owns it is Ben Ark. He's a friend of mine. He uh, runs the Ellen Bits group, and he is an early, well, he's, one, he's pr pretty much one of the inventors of Nostra. He was there when it was, he was one of the consultants for creating it. Uh, and he owns this website, but I guess he needs money, so uh, feel free to purchase it from him. If, you, if anyone's got $5 million, you can have that, you can have Nostra.com. Uh, if it's sold, he's going to give 10% of the proceeds to Fiat Jaff and 10% of the proceeds toward Ellen Bits development. And I guess keep 80% for himself. <laughs> I'm not sure what he'll do with the rest. I don't know. It, does, it just says he'll give 10% to him and 10% to him. Uh, so, yeah, could, I hope someone purchases it. And good luck. One day where the 24 hour Nostra news cycle was just dominated by people making, I guess, making fun of his sale offer and yeah. offering all kinds of stuff. I saw a lot of people offering random domains they had for $5 million on that day. <laughs> Uh, just being like, I'm selling mine too. But yeah, we'll see what happens. If it doesn't get sold, then he says he's going to uh, don't donate it to Ellen Bits, and it, it'll be in, become an asset under Ellen Bits's um, thing. So, Sounds good yep. So good news either way. Uh, time to walk the talk. Uh, access to web for the man. Oh, this is one I didn't want to share. Uh, <laughs> No, somebody, I, I told you earlier I was scrolling through uh, the Telegram looking for things to share, and some guy shared this link, so I clicked it, and it turns out it's some Web3 crypto thing. So I was like, oh, that's, I, I didn't want to share it. Uh, so any questions about why Web3 sucks? <laughs> it's a better, well, if it, but Web3 sucks, though, so. Well, we know Nostra sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Nostra sucks, but it's still better than Web3. Uh, okay, so the other thing I want to talk about, or not, another thing out of all this list of things, is Nostrasia. Uh, sometimes Nostra has in-person meetups. Can you believe it? Like, I can't imagine getting together with an actual group of people who are interested in Nostra. Uh, it would never happen. But some of these things exist, like meetups where actual people in the real world get together. And one of them is the Nostrasia conference happening in November. It's like so much fun, dude. Yeah, I know. Well, well, it's just a picture of a giraffe. I mean, an, an ostrich. <laughs> Yeah, Tokyo does sound fun. So if anyone wants to go, check out Nostra.world and buy, buy a ticket. I wonder, let's find out how much tickets are. Oh, it's free? Sure. Well, great. Just purchase your plane ticket. Go, go, or boat ticket, I guess. Or you could walk there. Can you walk to Asia? Not All right. <laughs> 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 walk onto a boat, keep walking, <laughs> just make circles on the boat, and then walk off the boat. Uh, okay, so check that out, Nostra.world. Uh, Nostree, Nostree.me, a Nostra-based application to create, manage, and discover linked lists, show notes, and other stuff. Uh, so let's check it out. How do you do this? I guess I'll need to log in, which will probably mean, how does it want me to log in? Yeah, it needs me. It needs the extension. Stop doing this, guys. When you make Nostra apps, I don't want this freaking extension. What extension are you talking about? Al well, either just one of the ones that supports Nostra. You can use Albi. Albi is a pretty common one. Nos 2x is another, and then there's a couple Ordinals one that that support this as well. What do you want me to do? They just want me to log in. 
See, that, that's super annoying. <laughs> Stop making me do that. Uh, okay, so what, what is this? It's supposed to be, I can manage, I can create and manage lists, I guess, and I can view a profile. Create new list, my list, hello. And now I've got a list, I guess. Yay. So you can just throw a pen arc in there and then that'll be the rest of them. There you go. I made a list. <laughs> That's kind of neat. Lists are nice. You can use them to like bookmark content and stuff or, uh, or just kind of, I mean, now I, can, now I have a place I can go back and see interesting links I've created on Nostr or interesting notes. This is, this is my previous Nostr notes. And it even shows, uh, shows my lighting address. It popped up strike for some reason if I want to pay myself. Cool. Nice website, guy. There's a cool feature. This was actually on my list of demo also. I wanted to show the forking. You can, you can fork well, come, well, come on up and show. I want to see the forking. Uh, one of my favorite features about this app is that you can fork someone else's list. And it's kind of in the same theme of what we saw earlier with uh, Noster Wiki, because or uh, wiki noster because on there you can fork a page um, so first I need to find um, a, a list I want to fork so let me pull up another user on noster band and um, let's see let me pull up my profile copy and pub bring it over to Nostri. Uh, yeah, I was pretty excited when I first saw Nostri because I think something like that, I first thought this about uh, Nasta.me, but I think they could be a viable replacement for sites like Beacon's page or, or Linktree. Um, okay. So I made a list called Bitcoin books, and the only book on there is crypto economics. Sorry, I just, I don't really read a whole lot of books. And if I was gonna read just one book about Bitcoin, that's what it would be. But the name to book. <laughs> yeah, I could, I actually could do that. Uh, and it would still be in the same tree. And that's where I wanna uh, get into the forking part. So this here, uh, this, this shows that my list is forked from Tony's list. So I can click here, go to the forked list, and this is a longer list of books. Uh, now, one feature that I wish Nostri had, and maybe maybe someone could make their own PR and build it, uh, would be to show uh, lists that were forked from this list. It only shows like the other direction, like working up towards the parent of the tree. But I think it'd be nice if it could also show like descendants in the tree, because then you would see that Tony's list here has been forked multiple times. And it's nice to be able to compare all of those. And I, I think this is another really powerful use case of Noster. It kind of highlights some of the other stuff that can happen, because if enough people generate lists like this, you could have something called loose consensus emerge, where you can scrape all this data and look at names of lists or, or lists that explicitly fork another list and, and come up with, with sort of a loose consensus around what are the Bitcoin books? Yeah, what are, what, what are, you could look at things like common denominators or maybe some that are outliers, and it can all be based on the people that you follow in your web of trust. And so it might, it might end up being a really cool way to discover books that you wouldn't find otherwise. Where do they typically show up at the list just on sites like this? There's Lister, was it Lister.lol? I think that was the original one. Nostri is actually limited to lists of links. So those are all just links to other websites. It's still cool though. I want to I want to fork your list and change the name. So let's see, fork. Uh, did I do it right? Or go back uh, to the right. Use that menu, and you have to be logged in to fork. I thought it was logged in. I guess I'm not logged in. 
It logged me out when I viewed your list? I think it, there's a bug where it logs you out every time you pull up a profile. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I'm supposed to work around that to so you can only see. <laughs> yeah, if you can go back, you can go back to some, you can log in and then go back to someone's profile. So now I'm logged in and I should be able to fork it. Uh, and I can change the title to Bitcoin book. There we go. Now I've got two lists. Oh no, I only have one list? You can only have one? Oh, okay. My list is there, and then the Bitcoin. Oh, cool. I like this. Good, good job, whoever made Nostri. Uh, but yeah, we've, we've included some feature requests, and uh, we're a bunch of developers. So if anyone wants to be a developer, go and uh, go and do, do, go forth and develop. Okay. Cool. Nice. The next thing I want to show off is Favi, the link and bio tool built on Nostra where you own your own data. So he's got a nice little picture over here of a profile. And you can see links in it. So as an example, here's some guy's profile. You can just type in their username, which is a nice, a nice thing. And it will pull, try to pull up their profile. And if it finds it, it'll show you. It, it'll turn all of the links in their profile into, uh, into clickable little buttons. Nice. How is it a competitor? This just shows you links. That if, they have, if you have a link in your profile, it just makes a button for it. Yeah, I think so. So like if I go to this guy's profile, G Zeus, uh, Nostra.band, I think we're going to see four links in his profile and it's just making buttons for them, which is kind of neat. People make little tiny apps that do not much on Nostra all the time. Is this the guy, Daniel DeQuino? No, he's not it. There he is. So if we click his uh, profile, yeah, he's got, he's got one link there. And I don't know. I don't see any other ones. Yeah, one link there, one link there. And maybe it's turning this into a link, the GitHub thing. Let's go see. Take this over here. So I can see his GitHub on there. And that makes sense. There's the GitHub. Then it's got my posts on. Oh, it's just he adds links to, your, to where you can view somebody on Primal and Coracle. I think it discovered there. Yeah. Probably because he has it right there. Oh yeah, neat. So yeah, it just makes buttons for all of your all of the links in your profile and adds where people can find you on Primal or Coracle. Useful. I could I could see myself using that occasionally. So nice job, Fabi. And also he made this stylish stylish little thing that tells you what it does. So good job, Fabi. Uh, the next thing is free from rewire the social network. Once again, we've got a cool looking splash page on here. Any questions about Fabi, by the way? I should, I should be asking if there are questions before I move on. Um, okay, so what do we got? This, uh, Fabi is a new social network built on Noster, and it uses a bunch of birds, and it tells you all the features of it. Uh, okay, cool. You can get it on the App Store on Google Play. You can download the APK, and then there's... I don't know what that is. Let's, let's find out. Scan. I think it's just going to open up Google Play. Because the URL is. No, it doesn't open up Google Play. It opens up their website. It opens up this. which is just a link to Google Play. <laughs> so yeah. OK, cool. So that's what that does. Uh, but you can check that out if you want. And let's, let's view his little tutorial video on how it works. Welcome to the Free From Nostra client. In this tutorial, we'll guide you through the process of creating an account. So you create an account. Your pup you can share. Then it gives you a feed of people you should follow. You pick some, and then you can view them. Nice. It's just another Twitter clone. Cool. Good on you. He made a Twitter clone. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, so if you, anyone wants to contribute to that, uh, if you can find it's, it has dev tools. And uh, ooh, it has, it has a web version. Oh, that's nice. He's got a web version of this thing. Yeah, cool. And you can click raw if you want to see it in. 
I don't know what happens if you click raw. Nothing happens. Okay, cool. There you go. He's got a web version. All right. Good, good job, man. Free, free from is the website, and uh, it is freefrom.space. So check out that little Noster or Twitter clone that also has a web version. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you is Mutiny. Mutiny Wallet recently added support for Noster right inside of Mutiny. So you can go to the contact section, and you can import contacts from Noster, and it'll show you who they're zapping. So can I import you? Do you zap people? Okay, cool. Uh, Noster.band, captain, copy his npub, sync, and we'll see who you're zapping. And you will show up as a contact so I can zap you as well, which is neat. Yeah, well, it's it's yeah, zapping is not private at all. But this is cool. Look at all these. Look at all these people. He's wait. How is this showing? This is just showing people who are zapping other people. It's not showing you zapping someone. Well, I'll click on him first. I think. I don't. I don't see him. It's just like it sorts everyone in Noster A to C. I guess. <laughs> Oh, it thinks I'm you. I plugged in your profile, so it thinks I'm you. And then it pulled in your follow list, and you can see who your friends or your follows are zapping. Do you follow this grumpy gardener guy? Probably. I follow hundreds of people now and lost track. Cool. That's kind of a neat feature. You get, you, they have a little, little zapping interface where you can see who's zapping who. Nice. Good, good on you, mutiny guys. Uh, I wonder if I can make it. How do I make it so that it knows, so that it knows it's me? Will it be able to load me? Because I loaded someone who's not me. No, it just stored. It's now forever now. It thinks I'm you. Um, oh, good. They could just remove it. So it's not forever. It was very easy. So I could plug mine in there, and then it would show who my follows are zapping. Good on you guys. Thank you for making that tool. Uh, so yeah, a nice little tool for seeing uh, kind of a social feed in there. And then you can also like click these people if you want to zap them. Well, this guy doesn't have a zapping, a zappable profile, but let's find someone who does in here. Uh, maybe this guy. No, him not either. Well, if you find someone who has a zappable profile, you can grab them from your contacts and then and then zap them, which is nice. So Jacob. Yeah, so this guy has a lightning address in there, so I can zap him. Which is cool. Yeah, it probably should. Is it sending as a zap or just a lightning ping? I don't know. I don't have enough balance to find out. So. Have you ever entered a private key that'll go through the zap? Basically, you don't take zap. Well, you, you could, you, there, there could be a Nostra key for this wallet. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Mutiny guys, if you ever want to come and, uh, and tell us, uh, we would love to know that. And also as a feature request, please like give a little icon if somebody is zappable. That would be, that'd be useful. Um, yeah, OK, so cool. Any questions about Mutiny and their integration? Cool. Uh, the next thing is from TabConf. TabConf happened a couple weeks ago. And at it, there were two uh, groups who contributed to the Nostra category that won, that won prizes. One of them was the data, Noster Data Buffet, which is an alternative to Noster vending machines. The Data Buffet Chads. So I wanted to show you uh, their presentation because they won a prize, and it was cool. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Jim. I'm here with Christian, Topher, and Austin, aka Plebdev. Uh, in this hackathon, we work on a new net for streamlining scalable and high volume machine to machine uh, payment services using those sort of LN URL and L402s. So, first question is what is a data buffet? It's a new NIP that standardizes how service providers publish offers and make it easy for clients to interchange and chain requests so they can build pipelines and build sophisticated applications that, that 
um, that consolidate the sophistication just of the client. So we stay true to the no sir design principle of don't play with smart clients. Looking into the context why we build this, we looked at the data vetting. I'm going to skip the presentation and go and go to the demo. So let me just fast forward till he gets to the demo. But how can you give a 30 second description because you were on the team of what uh, Data Machines does? That's Topher. But he's right there on the screen, but now he's coming up. Whoa, the same guy. The same guy. He won a prize. We were trying to recreate the King of the Hill kind of look right here. <laughs> Saw drinking beers together. Austin just didn't want to look gay, so he yeah. stayed away from the other guys. Yeah, we were radioactive to him. He was just kind of tagging along. But he uh, did the UI. So yeah, um, I could talk over this if you mute the audio and uh, just show the demo. So <clears throat> yeah, basically, so what Austin did is he made a front end uh, just to kind of showcase our new NIP. Uh, I believe it's NIP 105. Uh, and uh, basically, the idea behind it is that um, we want to take advantage of L402s, and uh, L402 is just this way of repurposing the 402 uh, error status code for HTTP uh, to where if you have an endpoint and you want to charge money, then you can give somebody a 402 response. And the idea is that anybody that um, is lightning aware that's accessing your API, uh, they can take that 402 response, which should also include an invoice, uh, pay the invoice, and then be able to access the endpoint. So it would be nice uh, if you could see what endpoints you could pay for and see what they typically charge and uh, what they're kind of looking for in terms of like what kind of how should you shape your request, what kind of response are you going to be getting back. So the whole idea of uh, NIP 105 is that you would post these offers on Noster um, and use the power of Noster for peer discovery. Uh, you would post this offer, it would showcase your endpoint, it would showcase what you're doing with it, what service you're offering, what's your price, what's your rate, um, what kind of uh, body you're expecting in the request, and then what you could uh, expect in response. So uh, we wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So that, that's essentially the idea. You post this offer, um, you're able to then use Noster to kind of see all these offers available for different services, what it would cost you to pay. Uh, and they would use that as discovery to see what endpoint you would talk to. And then uh, once you start talking to the endpoint, then everything else just kind of like goes away from Nostra and moves just standard HTTP stuff. Uh, and that's pretty much um, the, oh, okay, thanks Logan. Yeah, so uh, also as a part of the NIP uh, is essentially like how you handle the 402, how you pay, and uh, also, we want to add proof of payment, um, which is similar to Zaps. They're going to be almost identical to Zaps uh, in implementation, so they'll be compatible with other wallets that support Zaps. But uh, we want to tailor the proof of payment so that uh, when you do pay for one of these endpoints, you actually have a receipt. And you can use that receipt to um, maybe uh, tie it to a review. Or if you want to post about like some issues you have with the service, uh, then you can sort of prove that you did interact with this endpoint and you did pay them for a service, so you do have some standing. Uh, and that's it. Uh, we try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, we're competing with this other implementation called Data Vending Machines, where they try to just do all of the communication over Noster, uh, including the back and forth and job status and all that other stuff, and uh, we just thought that was like too excessive. Um, HTTP is already good enough for that. You don't really need to bump it up to Noster with WebSockets and all that other stuff. Um, but Noster uh, does shine when you use it for this uh, peer discovery feature. And so that's the purpose of uh, NIP 105. Are you guys gonna um, enter it for full stock funds when it's a different price? Maybe, yeah, because I think once we um, implement the proof of payment stuff, it's just gonna be clear that like this is the way you do things. Like this whole idea of having a data buffet where um, I want to go online, I want to see, I, I like essentially want like maybe transcription of a video or I want just basic chat GPT-4 answer a question for me. Maybe even something custom like, you know, somebody can like give you, you give them like a whole bunch of content and they'll turn it into an embedding and then ask a prompt based on that embedding. Like just all of the hard stuff that you don't want to deal with, you'd rather just have it all wrapped up and an endpoint that you can just easily call and get what you want out of it. Um, it would be nice to just have a way to search through all that stuff and then have a marketplace where you could 
uh, shop around. And so, yeah, I feel like this is the way that you do it. Um, it's trying to honor the, it, it's not trying to do too much. It's trying to basically take advantage of uh, what Noster can do while uh, still like keeping it within the realm of HTTP and uh, just, you know, not trying to reinvent the wheel where it's not necessary. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so in the spec. <clears throat> can you repeat the question? For the yeah, so uh, can Zaps be used as proof of payment? Yes. So in our spec, um, we, the way that we're handling the proof of payment is that they're essentially Zaps underneath the hood. We're just formatting it a little bit differently um, because the idea is, is that you, Zaps are sort of built with this social media aspect into them to where you want to publish this information on Noster so you can kind of see who's zapping who. But you might want a proof of payment and then you might want to use that proof of payment outside of Noster because it is a cryptographic proof and it's valuable in that way. So we format the zaps slightly differently on the surface, but the way that they're constructed internally um, is identical to zaps. So essentially what that means is, is that for these proofs, uh, you can, con they won't look like Noster notes on the surface, but you can convert them into one. And there you can validate them using a signing device or an extension or anything that works with Noster. So it's, it's using the same proof format underneath the hood, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, if you look at NIP1, NIP1 tells you how like essentially these proofs are constructed. Uh, we're using that underneath the hood, but on the surface, it's slight, formatted slightly differently. It's more compact. It's actually more akin to a NIP26, where they sort of have these compact proofs for delegations. We're sort of using that same format, which is, is actually a really nice format. Um, Fiat Jaff like, condemned them recently, saying like NIP26 is dead. Uh, but I really like the format, so that's kind of like what we're going with, because they're more portable, and you can kind of use them in other use cases outside of Noster. Killing it? No, they were behind it. I think they were originally behind it. Like supporting it. They're not really doing much with Noster. I don't think they're really trying to get rid of Noster. And I think the whole reason they got merged in was because they wanted it. Yeah, it was, I remember when NIP 26 was being pushed really heavily. And it was just sort of this like internal panic where it's like, oh, well, what if people lose their keys? Uh, we have no way of doing key rotation. I know, let's just do. Let's just create this little proof that delegates to another key and we'll tie it to every single event that you ever post, period. And now this is just what you do now. And uh, that didn't go over very well. There was, there was some strong adoption of NIP26 by some of the major clients that I saw, uh, but I don't know what happened to it after that. Uh, yeah, you, you essentially have to change Noster because you would have to change the idea of what it means to have that public key in the event it's like, oh, well, now that public key, you know, that's not the real identity. You have to now look for this tw NIP26, like, uh, delegation proof and then go find what that looks at. So now you sort of, like, doubled the lookups that you have to do just with every single note. It, it, the scalability was stupid. Um, so I'm not surprised that it's dead. But in that NIP, like, the way that they formatted the proofs to keep them as small as possible was actually really nice and, and sort, of, sort of used that as inspiration for this new proofing system we're going to do. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank I think you, that's it. Thank you. I just want to mention that even though NIP26 is dead, I don't think key delegation is dead. I think key delegation is very good. Uh, I use it in Magic Web Store, and no one's complained about that. Okay, they have. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think we, we can we can still do it. We can make it better. Don't don't give up on NIP key delegation just because NIP26 sucks. Um, I didn't use NIP26 in Magic Web Store, I do. Uh, okay, so that was one of the presentations. Uh, I have another one that I want to show you. How much time do we have left? Where are we at? Uh, we're we're time. But where are we at, though, on time? Uh, we're at one hour and nine minutes? Okay, well, let's make, it, let's make this one uh, 90 minutes. That'll be our, does that sound good? Okay, cool. Yeah, but this isn't bit devs. I get bored. <laughs> it's a bit, bit, bit of usually two hours, but yeah. Okay, so that was that. Thank you guys for doing Data Buffet. Uh, this is the GitHub, the Data Buffet web. 
So I will just zoom in on the, on the URL there so that anyone who's in the live stream can find that and search for it. Yeah, Data Buffet Web. So check that out. And if you want to use the Data Buffet stuff, there's like an API and everything. Or I think this is actually needs revised. But yeah, check it out. Data, data, data Buffet. Uh, the next thing is from Noster Magazine. They found a cool thing, uh, which is a prototype for a new Noster wallet for Bitcoin. Um, so this is a Bitcoin wallet. It has your, you know, it has your sats in there. You can send and receive, but it also has your Nostra profile in there. And so it's like a social kind of Bitcoin wallet. And it does. It looks neat. It's not out yet. It's just this is just a prototype. Someone mocked this up, um, but I I like the look. So somebody make it. Somebody go and make this prototype into a reality because because it, it does look but, nice. But, but, but will Apple let that pass or Android? You know what I mean? With the they they let most Bitcoin wallets through, right? So. I don't know. Uh, the, the question was, will Apple allow this? I, I don't know. They didn't because they didn't let Domus it because they made Domus drop Zaps. I don't know. There were there was other there's other wallets on Apple that do that do support Zaps. So there seems to be ways of integrating it with that gets Apple's blessing. Um, but this doesn't even show Zaps. This is just sending and receiving Bitcoin, and also it has your Nostra profile in there. So I don't know. But it looks nice, and uh, and also Android didn't care. Android didn't didn't block Domus. Domus still has apps on it, where Domus doesn't exist on Android. But other apps do have it, and Android doesn't care. So even if uh, we just have to make it for Android, I would still like this to exist because it looks cool. It's a good it's a good looking Android wallet or Bitcoin wallet. Uh, okay, so there's that. Any questions about uh, Nostra? Any additional questions about Nostra wallets? Uh, the question is, are, d is there any, what? <laughs> any idea? Is that what it was? Any idea about the Taj Dreja? Oh, go to, go to Will's profile. I saw that. No, uh, go to his profile. Yeah, go to Will's profile. Yeah, Will's profile. Yeah, Will's profile. Taj Dreja just walked up to my table and described, I clicked it and now it's loading, and described a perfect solution, solution to the Noster key rotation problem. Uh, comments, <laughs> who is that? <laughs> Guy who invented lightning, Satoshi's son. <laughs> Whiteboard it tomorrow. I feel like that sometimes. It doesn't look like there's much follow up. Hey, JB. When well, are you going to explain what this perfect solution is? I would we'd all like to know, JB. Come on. Uh, I don't know. I, I came up with a not uh, with an imperfect solution that I use in Magic Web Store, where you just link your profile and then you can delete that key and, and unlink it later if you don't want it anymore. Uh, I don't know. Maybe his solution is better than mine, but mine works. So check out mine. You can learn more at MagicWebStore.xyz. Yeah, I shield my own stuff. Can you believe it? Uh, okay, so there we go. Any other? So that, that's, I don't know what the, the question was like, uh, are there any ideas what the solution is? No, I don't know what the solution is. It, do, it doesn't look like Will has explained it or Taj in public. Uh, okay, so that's that. Um, the next one I, is a, just a link to this guy in the Nostra Telegram when I was scrolling through looking for stuff for this. I thought his comment was funny. He said, where is the source code of Nostra? What is the best way to contribute? This poor fellow <laughs> thinks Noster is a program. Uh, it's not. It's it's a protocol. But you can find uh, you can find the Noster protocol. On Noster.com. You can probably find, you might be able to find it on Noster.com. Noster.com. Yeah, yeah, you can just view Noster and get. You just click that button and you'll find the protocol. This the the equivalent the pro, the equivalent for um of a protocol for. Uh, the equivalent of source code for a protocol is this type of thing. The, the, the NIPs are the, the specifications, the specs. That's the equivalent of source code. And so here's the spec. This is, this is it. <laughs> this is what you get with Noster. Um, but yeah, the poor fellow wants source code, and he wants to contribute. And that's awesome. I want to support that. 
Um, but you, you make, you write the source code, my, my friend, you, you write it, you know, because this is just a protocol. This is just how to interact with Nostra relays. Uh, the question is, what if he makes a really great contribution, but Fiat Jaff doesn't like it? Fiat Jaff's not in charge of Noster. But he's in charge of this uh, GitHub repo, isn't he? M maybe, but that doesn't matter. It, it, just fork it and make your own. It, so the question was, isn't Fiat Jaff in charge of this thing, though? Yeah, he, he, he probably is in charge of this thing. I don't know who all the contributors are, but and all the people who have keys to modify this. I'm sure there's more people than just Fiat Jaff who have the keys. But he certainly has keys to this uh, GitHub repo. So he's number one contributor. Wouldn't it be cool if there was a Nostra native way of hosting this document? Wouldn't it be cool if there's a Nostra native way of hosting this document? It would. I'm ready to be tagged out if you've got something to show. No, I mean, if there was like a Nostra Wikipedia kind of thing, that might be. Uh, but for Git content? Put it all in, in uh, Wikinostra. Just put, just put Git in, in Nostra Wiki? I guess we could. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's put the let's put this in there. Can you do that? Do that before before we're done in the next twenty minutes. Wouldn't be hard, especially you, nip one's the only required one. So just put nip one in there, and we'll be we'll be good. Uh, okay. So that's the question. Uh, so yeah, there is no source code for Noster. You have to write it. Like everyone who writes in a, a client or a relay has to write the source code for it. Uh, and you, there are existing ones. Um, so if you go to GitHub and you search for Nostra Relay, you will find you'll find the source code for some on here. Like there's one, there's one. These are some popular things. There's a Python one in here somewhere, so you could search for just a Python one right there. Yeah, th those are some source codes for Nostra. Or you can do a client, and you could search for Nostra Client, my friend. And there's there's the source code for that client. Here's the source code for this client. You know, it's, it's all over, but you, you have to write it or you have to find someone else's that they wrote and contribute. And that's, that's the answer. So, guru, I hope you're watching. <laughs> uh, the next thing I wanted to show is recently I was looking for a REST API for Noster because I like working with REST APIs where you can send GET requests and POST requests. They're more reliable than WebSockets because they don't drop as easily. And if they do drop, you get an error message back from the internet relay. Uh, so I wanted that for Noster because it would make app development more easily easy. So I did a search and eventually I found this guy, Noster Vercel API. And so he's got this little website up here which d doesn't have anything on the home page, but you can it's you can deploy this API yourself on your own Vercel instance or you can use his cuz he's got one right here and he's got all sorts of endpoints for doing stuff. So like this one uh, if I do slash API slash key slash generate, it created a key for me. There's my secret key, and it shows it to you in NSEC format. Let me make this bigger. I know, this is really neat. There's a public key, and there's an NPUB, so I can easily create a key just like that. Uh, I can pass in a secret key, and it will tell me it's public key, which is nice. Uh, these are some various endpoints. I can publish events uh, by making a post request to this. So I can create an event, publish it, to his, um, to his little server thing, and it'll broadcast it to Noster. Or I can pass in an event ID, and it will give, it will find that event for me and bring it back. So this should make things really easy for web devs. Uh, if you don't like using you know, web sockets, which is how most relays create an API for you, this website makes it really easy with get requests and post requests. I think I'll probably use this in my next uh, project because they're easy and more reliable than web sockets. So thank you, uh, man, for making that. Uh, I wonder, does he have anything about what relays to use? Uh, I don't see that in here. But I do suspect, if I do a search, that he's got a set of relays that he publishes to, maybe? Uh, there's nothing in the code about relays. Um, but I would like that as an option. I would like to be able to say, like, if I'm going to publish a post, um, so that would be the event slash publish. I would like to be able to specify, oh, you can. You can just specify what relay you want to publish it to. Great, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was going to ask for. Great, yeah, I'm definitely using this in my next project. Uh, so awesome, awesome thing, man. He made a nice REST API, uh, and this should make it really easy on web devs. 
Any questions about that? Uh, yeah, well, let me zoom in on the URL for, for you on the web. Uh, if, you want, if you're a Nostra developer and you are frustrated with web sockets always dropping and that kind of thing, use, use this. Use this. And he, he also recommends self-hosting it, so you can do that. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to use his. So thank you, Kawax, for making this. Uh, I've been wanting something like this to exist, and now it does. Uh, all right, cool. Are there any decent Reddit-style Nostra clients yet? Nope. <laughs> Come on up. You got you know of one? <laughs> Are there any uh, decent Reddit style Nostra clients yet? Well, Amethyst is my go-to for everything, and they they have pretty good support for um, the Reddit style thing. Um, the only the only problem with their support is that it's more good for the viewer side. If you're, if you're trying to create a Nostra community or moderate one, it doesn't have the tools you need for that. So there's another client called Satellite Earth, and they are, they are a pretty good client for um, creating and moderating these communities. Um, it's a it's it's only a web it's only a web app. Um, I try to not spend too much time on that app because I'm more used to using Amethyst and I think it works really smoothly. It has advantages of being a native app. So I think probably between those two is your best combination. Obviously, if you're an iOS user, you need to switch over to Android. But other than that, I think we do have some decent Reddit style clients. I disagree, because all the things <laughs> that you said are problems with them make them suck. <laughs> so we only have sucky ones. Yeah, but that's why we need contributors. So Nostra.Kiwi is one that this is a sucky um, uh, Nostra equivalent of Reddit. So one thing that's sucky about it is it's only mobile. Like they, they only have a mobile interface. Uh, and so that's not good. Like, I would like better than that. Um, so, but you can do, you can do Nostra type or Reddit type stuff in here. You can create a community. Uh, these are some of the communities that are in here. Let's go into the AI one. And you can, they have like a little chat integration as well as you can read uh, and contribute and comment on articles about it just like that. But you know, it's, it's mobile only, which kind of sucks. And, uh, and then there's another one called uh, zappedit.com which looks better, at least this one, I think this one actually has a decent interface. But uh, Zaptit <coughs> has, uh, has some problems with it, like if I go into one of these things, if I go into one of the topics I follow. Uh, I, the only way you can upvote or downvote things is with Zaps. So if I upvote, oh, oh, that's not true anymore. They have, oh, okay, they fixed that. You can zap or you can, okay, this one's getting better then. So this one might, th here's your answer, try Zaptit, my friend. Yeah, you can upvote as many times as you like. <laughs> In that case, it's exactly like Reddit. It's exactly like Reddit. It's even easier than Reddit to bot your own thing to the top. But yeah, so so these these things suck. Uh, and the the then there's the amethyst, but amethyst doesn't um, doesn't let you actually create communities. So that sucks too. They all we don't have a good Reddit alternative. The Nostra Privacy Paradox is an article that was published in March, so I don't know why it's on my list. <laughs> He's just a Nostra developer, I don't need him. I think we're getting done, guys. Uh, the Nostra comment system, I showed you all that already. Uh, so yeah, that's it, that's everything I have, except for one more last final thing. I have one more last final thing to show you guys, and that's UTXO dealership. Um, so we had another winner of the, uh, in the Nostra category, for, uh, at the Tabcon Hackathon. Who, 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 who was the did that work? Where's our trophy? And we won a trophy. Nick Thiel, T Tiley, Nick Tiley and I uh, created UTXO Dealership, which was our submission for the Nostra category of the Tabcon Hackathon, and it won grand prize. So, yay. 
Um, so we wanted to use Noster as what, what exactly, exactly what he talked about for peer discovery, uh, which is one thing that Noster is really good at. Um, and we used it for uh, creating this little UTXO dealership website, which is uh, which allows you to sell uh, UTXOs on Bitcoin. Oh, with, free -owned with what? You can get pre-owned or new UTXOs. Yeah. <laughs> so you need a buyer and a seller on here, and uh, you can uh, miners can sell Coinbase UTXOs that they're about to mine. Uh, people who have coin joined UTXOs can sell those. If you want, if you have like you've done some coin joins and you've got all these, you know, clean coins that you'd like to sell, you can do that on this website. Uh, or if you're using like Samurai or something uh, or Wasabi and it creates toxic change outputs, you can sell those if you don't want those anymore. And uh, buyers can purchase them. So we have like three little categories on here. And if I make one, I can be like, you know, I've got a toxic change output that's worth 15,000 sats. I would like to sell it for 10,000 sats just to get rid of it. Uh, I can put in a Bitcoin address. So example, Bitcoin address. Let's get one. Let me just pop that in. And then it shows up right here under this category, and the buyer can purchase it from me. And we'll like we use not I use Noster as like an order book for this stuff. It asks him to send 10,000 sats to this address, and then it'll show up on here and ask him to send the 15,000 sats to this guy, and it works. Like it actually uses atomic swaps to make it so they can't steal from each other. Also, when this guy sends it to this guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it hasn't settled because it's not. This address does not belong to this guy. Uh, it is a swap address, and he can only take the money from this one if he sends fifteen thousand sats to the to oh, the other guy. Right, it's a different oh, one. Close. Yeah, because the one I entered started with an L, and this one starts. With, this is a SegWit address. So it starts with TB one. Yeah, so this uh, uses uh, atomic swaps to make it so you can't steal from each other. But you can sell your unwanted UTXOs. Uh, you can. Uh, this is basically a Bitcoin equivalent of Tornado Cash. Like, this is this is pretty awesome. <laughs> so, we won grand prize at the hackathon, and uh, we are looking forward to finishing this and releasing it on mainnet. Right now, it's just on testnet. But uh, yeah, so this this once again is showing that you can use Nostra as sort of an order book for finding peers, and that's what we do. Then they would still know that you purchased the coin from them. So, uh, sorry. The question was, what happens if the seller is a spook? Like, what if what if uh, the government has a bunch of coins from Mount Gox? And what if they list them for sale? And as soon as you buy one, they break down your door and arrest you and kill your dog. Uh, then you're just in jail. <laughs> so, just in jail. so, so, so you're gonna pursue this? Is that what yeah. You're gonna... Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna pursue it. We're gonna make it look gonna not look nice, and we're gonna. Like the question is, are we going to take any arbitrage? No, uh, I'm, at least I'm not. I'm going to make it for free and available for anyone to use. And uh, I'm not going to have any financial interest in the product. But uh, yeah, uh, it is going to, I'm, we're going to improve the, I'm going to try to improve the interface and make it look nice. Um, because Nick made it look like a car dealership, which is what I want it to look like. But I had to scrap his interface in order to add these new features. So I got to make that again, make it look like a car dealership again, where you can buy Certified pre-owned UTXOs or new UTXOs, or you could sell your old clunkers, sell your old clunker UTXOs or whatever you want. Um, but yeah, that's forthcoming. But it does work. Like you could, you can do. I can finish. I can finish the swap, and it would. You could see it in action. You guys want to see me do a swap? Yeah. Okay. Cool. We'll just do one. Um, so I'm going to restart, and I'm going to do a 10,000 sat UTXO. But let me get a different Bitcoin address. I'm gonna. It's all, it's running on MutinyNet, which is a, um, a a a signet that has 30 second blocks, so transactions come through quickly. Uh, and so I'm gonna grab a Bitcoin address from them. I'll grab this one, and both parties will just be using this as their Bitcoin address. So this address. Uh, paste that in there. Sell the UTXO. Yep. I will buy it. So now you'll notice. The address of the of the seller it ends in YR9V, and the address that I'm sending to does not. It ends in MWQC. So these are different Bitcoin addresses, but uh, this is how swap 
swaps work in Bitcoin. So I need to go to a faucet.mutinynet.com and the amount I need to do is 10,000 sats into this address. So it just sent the 10,000 sats. Usually it takes it, I don't know, 10 seconds or so for it to see it. So any second now we should see, yeah, now it wants to know where uh, this guy wants the, the 15,000 sats to go. So I will just put them in the same, you know, the, I'm sending them back to Mutiny uh, right here. So I do that, and now this guy has another different Bitcoin address, E9GE. No, notice there's no reuse of addresses happening here. Uh, he's supposed to send it into this, so I will do that. We'll do 15,000 sats into here. Do it. And within about 10 seconds or so, it should, it should see it. And uh, then it should complete pretty quickly after that. Um, yep, it did. So it tells me, okay, the swap has been, this part of the swap has been completed. Yeah, one thing Nick t did that was quite nice is that he, um, he broadcasted this automatically in his version, and I'm not, I have to do it manually. Um, so that'll be fixed in, the, in an upcoming well, version. Are you send them on Monster as, as a mess or something? No, the, I'm not sending the, the transaction doesn't go off of an event, I just publish it to the Bitcoin blockchain. Or to the mutiny no, net signet block gonna test net. No, they don't. These don't get published on Noster, but they get. They're still public though because you can see them on the Bitcoin blockchain. Right. But just not on Noster. Right. Yeah. So I did that one and I click OK, and then this guy gets one as well. Uh, it didn't show up. That's not good. There was an error. What's wrong with this? This needs to start with a zero. Shucks, I found a bug. Uh, this guy did not get his money. No, this guy did not get his money because he uh, had an invalid private key. So I have to fix that. But thank you guys for watching me fail my demo and uh, find it, yeah. We did half a swap. This guy, this guy got the 10,000 sats from the buyer, but the buyer had an invalid private key, so he did not get the 15,000 sats from the seller. But I'll fix that and then it'll work. All right, uh, that is UTXO dealership, which was the grand prize winner. It allows you to, if, once the bugs are fixed, do swaps on, uh, on Bitcoin for one UTXO to another. Uh, and that'll, that's a forthcoming thing. This has been Nostra Devs. And uh, yeah, if you want to know. Ask if anybody has any questions. Oh, yeah. Does anyone have any questions about UTXO dealership? Well, I don't remember. I think it was him. We, we were kind of brainstorming for names because we came up with a terrible name at first. We came up with the name Based Swap. That's what we were going to call it because you were swapping for Coinbases and it was based. Um, but then we changed the name because we wanted to make it. We, we thought of the, I don't know who thought of it, but one of us thought of the idea of doing a car dealership just as we were like joking around. And then we just ran with that. So we made it UTXO dealership. But I don't, I don't know if it was him. Or, I think it was him. Uh, what's up? Captain. If you're a miner and your business is basically converting the stats into fiat or paper energy, uh, where would something like this fit in? Would you use UTXO dealership to, to earn a, a little bit more? Or so the question is, if you're a miner, where would this fit into your business model? Uh, and it would fit in because uh, Coinbase UTXOs should have a premium due to them having zero history. When, you, when a miner creates a, um, a new block, they get a, a reward that includes six, currently 6.25 new Bitcoins that never have existed before. And those are like the best coins on the market in terms of privacy because they have no history. They've never been in Mt. Gox or, in, or anywhere. Um, so that's where they can sell. They, they, the, one of the interfaces on here allows miners to sell those and, uh, and send them directly in the Coinbase to the swap address. Um, and so those should command the, mo the greatest premium, I imagine. Uh, people might even, I could even easily imagine people paying 25% over spot price for those. Um, so that would be extra income for the miner. They would, they would sell these things for one Bitcoin and get 1.25 Bitcoins in return. And then they would just pass on, I imagine, the, the mining pools would pass on the extra revenue to their mining pool members. That'd be the hope. Uh, but we're using Noster because it makes it easy to like, do stuff like where you have an order book where you're sharing information back and forth. 
So this is this code in here is some of the code I used to create. You know, we're connecting to the NOS true relay. I'll zoom in for you. We're creating private keys and public keys, although apparently some of them are invalid. Uh, and we're sending messages back and forth. So uh, this is that. If you guys want to contribute and help me with this code, this is the, the GitHub for it is right here. Um, GitHub.com slash supertestnet slash UTXO dealership. So check that out and uh, help me make make this a great tool. But that's been Noster Devs, and uh, I think we're done. I think that's it. Thank you guys.